And I always tell people this. You go undefeated, you don't learn anything. You both just went undefeated. What did you learn? Welcome, everybody, to another exciting episode of the Coaches in the Mouth podcast. Today, we have a powerhouse episode lined up for you. But before we get started, we want to thank a couple of our partners. We'll start with a huge shout out to Lindsay and Associates. Lindsay and their team have been leading the real estate business in Northwest Arkansas for over 50 years, and they are the driving force behind our podcast. Before we get to our guests, we want to thank Andrea Hanna's law firm. If you need legal expertise that you can rely on, Andrea Hanna and her team are there to support you every step of the way. Plus, an extra thanks to ETX NWA Rentals, providing top-notch rental solutions in Northwest Arkansas. If you're looking for quality rentals, they've got you covered. If you enjoy today's podcast, consider hitting subscribe to allow us to continue to bring on these incredible guests. Enjoy the show. Welcome, everybody, to the Coaches in the Mouth pod. This is Coach Jeff Williams, along with Coach Bray Cook. Got two defending state championship coaches with us today. Six defending state championship head coach of Greenwood, Chris Young. Welcome to the show. Glad to be here. And 7A state champion last year, Fayetteville head coach, Coach Casey Dick. Welcome to the show, Coach. Thank you, guys. Well, guys, let's get into it. I mean, you, you – and this is the first question I'm going to get into. You won it last year. And let's and we'll, we're going to talk about last year undefeated seasons, which is very difficult. The the it's one of the most impossible things to do in football, I think. What is your mindset? And I, I'm going to go with Casey first here. What is your mindset two weeks after the state championship game? Besides getting rings and banquets, you as automatically as a coach, we start thinking about the next year. What was your thought process winning it to a month later? getting back from Christmas, what is your mindset with your program about trying to strive and get back there? Yeah, I think we, number, the first thing that, that I looked at was, you know, obviously we lost some key players in our quarterback, and I think obviously everybody knew that. But the big thing moving forward for us was, you know, how do, how do I take a new group of roughly, you know, what would be, let's just call it 30 to 35 seniors and make that group really bond and gel with everybody else in our building? Because that was one thing as – as I think all of us sit here and we, we have all these, you know, all these years of coaching and dube and there's something a lot, um, you know, that speaks for itself when you take a group of 150 kids. And then, you know, in some cases it's smaller, obviously from, from where you are, but that, how, how well did those groups really, really come together? And, and, you know, we talk to our guys a lot about genuinely like hanging out with other people on our team. And, um, you know, in the, in the years that we've, what we call have been pretty special that happens all across our building. Um, with all of our seniors, but then it trickles down into um, juniors and sophomores. And I think, obviously, the, one of the people that do a great job in that across our state and really the region is probably Chris and Greenwood from, you know, having squads and the things that they do to get those kids to interact with each other. And I think that also speaks on the consistency that they've had as well. Well, this is – as I want to hear your part on it because you've been through it, you know, as assistant, been there, you've been in Greenwood 24 years. You've done the back-to-back, three in a row and all those kind of things. What's your mindset? You're the head coach now. You've been through it. You've seen how this works. What's your mindset? Yeah, I think it's just find a way to be consistent. I think that's the toughest thing. You know, uh, we've been fortunate to have some good football teams there, so we know what it takes to be successful. Uh, So I think right off the bat, you identify where you're not really good right now. You know where you have to improve as a football team. Uh, You know, like Casey said, we lost a lot of really good football players. And so right off the bat, uh, you start trying to figure out how am I going to replace that guy, and, and your team's going to look different, and your strengths are going to be different. But you know that you've got to have certain things, and and so uh, we identified as a staff really quickly the areas we thought we need to start with and focus on, and try to build our off season forward from that point. Well, and it, it, you nailed that your off season. What do you do with your staffs? Because I know both of you, and I know both your staffs. So, you know, you can't stay the same. I mean, and you got to grow. And I'll hit with you first, Chris. How, what what do you challenge your staff to grow? Is it scheme wise or get better? Are you looking for one little thing to get better at, or as an overall program? Go ahead. Yeah, you know I think I got this from Coach Jones. He did such a great job of coaching coaches, and and so the first thing we're going to do staff wise is I have an individual meeting with each of our coaches, and just number one identify things they did really well, 
and uh, but then find ways that we can improve. Uh, I'm like Casey. I'm fortunate. I've got an unbelievable staff. A lot of guys with head coaching experience. A lot of guys that have been very successful. And so, you know, I think it's just sitting down and and having those conversations of what have we done well? How do we continue to do that? And at the same time, you know, you got to have those conversations about how do we get better? What are some areas that as a coach we can improve in? What do you got? I think there's a lot. You know, you you're going to have those meetings uh, from a coach's standpoint, obviously, but there's. You know, there's always obviously things you can learn, and the game progresses, and and people do you know things cert, you know well that I think maybe we can grasp and take, and you know I, we can take things from Chris. Chris can take things from us, but you know I think a lot of it is kind of staying on the on the creative side of you know not want to say creative, but additions of what you can take from you know whether it's philosophically or you know just things that you just throw in your program to really match and fit your kids you know year in and year out. And I think our um, you know, our defensive guys, I think they do an unbelievable job of, of sometimes like really getting a little bit farther out there um, and taking a lot of chances. But then, you know, that's that's kind of who they are, um, you know, and they fit an unbelievable mold as far as really developing each and every year and sitting down and saying, OK, like we lost this kid. Who's going to replace him? And they have like a we have a you know a two or three year plan of what that's going to look like and how they're going to fit in there, how they're going to be successful. Um, so I think it obviously takes some some forward thinking in that as well. Um, but I think the big thing is just, you know, there's got to be a lot of, you know, intentional relationships built um, all across throughout the building with with all your assistant coaches as well. Well, let's talk a little bit about last year, just reflection. I thought both of you you guys had to do it the hard way, you know, especially watching your team. They went through it and they, you know, had to beat Little Rock Christian twice. You know, the people in your conference, I think the 6A West went to the 6A East and won it in the first round, won every game. How tough, and you you turn around, you got to go through Conway and, and your league up here, which Bentville got in the finals and 7A West. Talk to us a little bit about that journey. I mean, it, it's it's week in, week out with both of you. Keeping kids healthy, which you don't you can control a little bit, but not a lot besides on Friday night. How do you keep that mold, keep that energy going? And, and one thing is getting that guy that's the – the fifteenth guy on the defense, you know, he's he's not a starter. Keeping them engaged, how do you do that? Yeah, you know, you hit on it. I think we've played Pratt schools four times, and and uh, you know, two really good football teams, Pulaski Academy and, and Little Rock Christian, and uh, it makes championship even that much more special when you play teams like that. Uh, I think the best thing we do is we start off playing Casey and Fayetteville in a scrimmage, and we played Stillwater. We've got a tough non conference schedule this year. Uh, we want to find out real quick where we are as a football team. We want to play the best because we know that Fayetteville is going to expose, you know, where you got to get better at. And we think that really helps us. But then you said it through the year, uh, you know, just the journey of trying to find a way to be consistent in our preparation each week, regardless who we're playing. You know, if we're playing Little Rock Christian or if we're playing the eighth place team in our conference, trying to keep things consistent and getting that same effort from our coaches, from our players, and just preparing uh, the same way regardless who we're playing. But really good teams in our conference last year. I thought 6A was as good as it's been in a long time. And, uh, you know, not just PA and Little Rock Christian, but Benton, what they had coming back, had a really good football team. And uh, so it was a challenge. And and I think playing those good teams throughout the year helped us be our best at the end. No doubt. And you guys had an unbelievable journey. I mean, you know, 7A West, we, we were sitting here about this time last year talking about, well, the 7A West getting back, you know, Central's dominated. This year, you're back in the finals. You all win it. Bentonville's there. Had to play them twice. Also, Thanksgiving weekend, a, a Conway team with Buck James, who has had a lot of success, was at Bryant. But you all have had to run the, the path also. Talk to us a little bit about that journey, just, you know, keeping healthy, keeping them engaged. And, and you know, they read the papers also. Oh, yeah. You know, they, they know what everybody's record <laughs> is. You guys do too. How do you keep them engaged and focused week in, week out? You know, they're 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 more in tune to what's going on in the outside world than they've ever been because of things like this. Um, you know, th this generation of kids has grown up with a cell phone in their hand, whether it's on Twitter or Instagram or, you know, they're listening to podcasts and doing all those things. So, like you said, they're more aware than of anything. And, you know, a lot of times they'll come to you and tell you certain things that you may not know about a kid playing or not playing or whatever because – you know, that'll be posted on social media or something like that. So I think the biggest thing that we found out with our kids last year was, and Chris hit on it, was consistency. And one of the things I started doing halfway through the year was, okay, like if we get to a certain point in time of the year, 
you know, you know, I even turned to some podcasts of some college head coaches and listened to them about what they changed as the year went on and why they changed it. And a lot of them said they didn't change anything. You know, they like, for instance, we never changed every Tuesday for us was a 24 period practice. Now we have, we may have changed what we did in that 24 periods, but our kids knew when it was the first Tuesday of the year through the last Tuesday of the year, when they went outside to practice, it was 24 periods. Monday was going to be 18 and Tuesday or Wednesday was going to be 18 periods. So I think, our, our kids do a phenomenal job of when they know what to expect, then they understand, okay, here, you know, th we in, in return get a lot more just because they know the expectations. They know it's going to be 24 periods and what it's going to look like. So I think being up front with them and, un and them having an understanding, no matter, you know, who we're playing or what we're doing, just like you said, you know, we're going to have 24 periods or we're going to have 18 and we're going to hit these, th you know, these things in there, these things in there, um, in there as well. But also, you know, you've got to find as the year goes on and, and it drags out, you've got to find, you've got to be creative. Um, you know, and trick them into ways to where it's being beneficial, but it's also taking a little bit of, you know, of the physical part of the game out of it for them, but also, you know, still preparing them in the same way. Uh, yeah, you know, one of the questions I had for y'all kind of falls off of that. Um, creating that consistency, um, but also the balance of everything else that y'all do um, as head coaches, um, the teaching side of things. I know you're an AD, you know, running the athletic department. How do you balance um, – the other side of the job that you know we don't talk about as much as coaches yeah this year has been new for me taking over the ad responsibilities and as jeff can tell you <laughs> a full-time job in itself but uh i think it's we've been able to do it at greenwood because i have great people around me you know we talked mm -hmm. about our staff a minute ago coach gill our defense coordinator who's the best in the business has had to take some stuff off of me from a head coach's standpoint mm -hmm. and then at the same time i have some people in the athletic department our secretary kim hobbs uh, brandon burr tower woods our assistant athletic directors you have to find great people, uh, be willing to give them responsibility and then hold them accountable. And and I'm blessed with a great team on the football side and on the athletic director side. And uh, those guys do a good job and make us look good. I don't think you could say it any better than that. I think as as all of us know, and Jeff, you know, you've been doing this longer than anybody here, you know, you're, you're only as good as the people that are around <laughs> you. Um, and so when you have really good, obviously, assistant coaches, you know, with really good administration, and then you're in a great community, community, and you're in a great place with great kids. You know, it all, and then it all kind of molds and meshes together. So, I think is like I said, I don't think he, you, anybody could say it any better. You know, we've got great assistant coaches, we've got great coordinators. Um, you know, we've got a great support cast of whether it's administrators or kids or community members or whatever it is. And so, I think it's it's all those things that that get compressed onto one and it kind of just molds together as far as you know what does it look like and what does it take and if you go to other places it's obviously not you know there may be a chunk missing here and a chunk missing there but that's uh, you know that chunk is end up what making you know that place special or this place special um you know to be at for sure is there so so when you're doing that when you're putting together those pieces um and, and you have a, an opportunity to, to hire an assistant coach um what is one thing that you look for? Like, I've got to have a, a coach who, who has this quality. Is there something that y'all um, particularly might have? Yeah, you know, I think it starts with do they love kids? You know, do they enjoy being around kids? Because if you've got somebody that loves kids, you can teach them how to coach. You can teach them the X's and O's and the drills. Uh, you know, I had to hire a coach this year. I had a really good coach that, that I lost that moved to Northwest Arkansas and um, got a lot of applications. But didn't spend a lot of time on those. You know, I went out looking and called Coach Dick and called Coach Williams and and said, hey, who are the best out there? And uh, you got to be careful when you hire a coach because once you get them, you're stuck with them. And so uh, we really try to put our time in on the front end and uh, really take our time hiring and make sure we research a guy and, and we feel like we have the opportunity to get better with that hire every time. So I think it's really, really important. I think it goes just like he said. You, could, you know, some people kind of get caught up in, you know, you got to go hire. I think you have to go hire just the best coach, um, you know, because as we all know, there's 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 the good and the bad of everything that's out there. And you want to hire a bunch of good coaches that do a phenomenal job. But, um, you know, like he said, I think you've, you've got to hire a guy that loves kids, wants to be around kids. But, you know, secondly, like just go hire the best coach and then you can you can mold and fit. And like you said, some people get caught up in their age. I don't I don't get caught up in the age because to, in my eyes, sometimes a young kid that doesn't know you know, a whole lot right now is going to be better than somebody that may be, you know, kind of set in their ways because we're, we're kind of creative, a little bit different than what we, you know, traditionally think on defense and on offense. So I think it kind of goes, you know, it goes in with what, what just like Coach Young said, and, you know, there's, there's, you got to balance it out and you got to know, you know, your certain strengths and weaknesses that you already have and how is it going to mesh and fit in there together as well.
I think, uh, you know, I'm sitting here with the light glistening off my sweaty forehead. <laughs> <laughs> we just got off, uh, got off the field at that, that seven on seven today. And um, everything going on with what we're allowed to do uh, in the summers, I think, is, and you, we were talking about it before, how unique it is to be able to put on shoulder pads um, eight days uh, if they're those you choose to go to team camps. What do you all do in the summer um, to develop your guys? Yeah, you know, we do a combination of the team camps and seven on seven. And of course, we still work out and practice at school. But those days are really beneficial for us, not necessarily for the returning starters, but the young guys, you know, really trying to figure out, is this guy going to be a guy we can count on, you know, to provide depth down the road this year? Uh, you hit on earlier talking about injuries. I think it, Casey and I has level both. The depth is so important. You've got to have that next linebacker. You've got to have that next tackle, that next guard. And uh, these camps give you the opportunity to get kids reps that wouldn't normally get a rep in a traditional Friday night game. Do y'all do y'all go to any overnight camps or anything like that anymore? We do not. I haven't done that. When I was at Bentonville West with Coach Pratt, we went to Tulsa. Yeah. The first two years, I think, and that second day, man, it is it's a grind. <laughs> it is a grind. It's a grind. It is long. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and you you know, it costs you know to take you know per kid, it costs money to go over there. So it's mm -hmm. a little bit of a balance of okay, how many kids I want to take compared to how much money do I really want to spend too. And like you said, you know, you can we can do some JV camps in between there. I think we've done three or four so far. You know, in June, so you really take those kids in there and get them a lot of reps and focused on you know their own specific position and their drill work and what they're going to see throughout the year. And I think that's really, really beneficial, especially like we, when I came from Texas, we couldn't do anything with them in the summer. Yeah. Um, so when I came up here and they're like, hey, you can do eight days of team camp in the summer and then you can do anything you want during or after the workout that involves a football. I was like, holy smokes. And, yeah. you know, you look up and you play your first game and it's like, OK, well, I've really had, you know, it says on the schedule you have one scrimmage, but you've probably realistically throughout the summer had two additional ones, uh, exactly. you know, by the time you get ready to go, plus everything that you've been able and, and allowed to do. So it's. It's really a lot as far as what we're what we're able to do um, as far as coaches throughout the state, obviously from June to July. Yeah. Let me jump in here. Is your June different than your July? And what I mean by that, what, my theory was, which right or wrong, I tried to do more team camps in June. We're coming out of spring practice. That way, if somebody got hurt, I could get them back. Did more seven on seven in July. Is is your June look different in your July? Are you trying to protect them a little bit more? or That's exactly what we're doing. It's it, just what you said. We want to be heavy on the team camps in June. We just come out of spring ball, just come out of our spring game. I uh, feel like our kids are prepared for that, you know, from a contact point of view. And then once we come back for the dead period, which we give our kids three weeks now, there's two week mandated and we add a week before. Well, most coaches are, are doing that a little bit, at least two and a half. I mean, these kids work so hard now and these coaches, you know, being able to get them away for a little bit. Uh, I think is really important. Our kids put in so much time, and and they're so consistent for us that if we can give them that extra week, lets them get away. But when we come back after the dead period, we'll focus on seven on seven. Uh, we'll get with a couple teams, and it's not like a traditional seven on seven tournament. It's more like a, a shared practice, and so we think that really benefits us. We'll get with Elkins and Fayetteville and and Alma and those guys, and and really just have a combined practice. It's not physical. We're not keeping score. We're running our base stuff. Yeah, and you know, from like the strength and conditioning side of it too, I think, you know, Chris hit on, I know in July they do fast dogs, um, you know, all those things in July. And that's really, when, I mean, we still work out in June, but if we're outside in June, which we are every day, it's pretty much 35 minutes of strictly football activities that we're doing, you know, because you have so many seven on sevens or you have a, a team camp or you have a JV team camp that we, you know, you're getting those kids ready to go. So ours looks different from from the standpoint of you know what we'll really be focusing on we come back in july we'll, you know the outside part of it will be more agility and getting you know trying to get guys legs going underneath them um as well as encompassing some football because you do have to get them ready to go in august and that and I, that's obviously our job that's as a, well conditioning. conditioning i mean you, you got to be in great shape yeah. and you you know with the, the condi uh you know hamstrings and things like that you know that yep. july to y'all I mean, you're pushing it in June too, but you're really pushing your getting Endurance, in shape, yeah. football shape during July. Yeah, we're we're spending those three weeks trying to get ready for the first day official practice in August, and so our focus, like Case said, is strength, conditioning, speed. We do very little football really in in July, um, and focus on that conditioning so that when we're ready to start practice that first day, kids are full speed. Change subject here a little bit, quarterbacks. And 
you've got one right now. It's been recruited by everybody in the nation. You've got a good one this year, but you had a great one last year who had an unbelievable year. Let's talk about recruiting process, and you're dealing with it right now. And quarterbacks are different than any other position, obviously, in football, and the recruiting process is different as far as they don't look at those quarterbacks like they do a left tackle. Both of you, talk to me. Casey, you go first. Talk to me about if you've got a, a big-time quarterback, how's that process look, and then what you're going through now. You know, it's it's changing every year, um, you know, and it's changing, number one, because of social media. So, you are you know, those 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 college coaches, that's what I tell our parents and, our, and you know, everybody that's associated with the program is they're going to reach out to that kid on social media before they contact me nowadays. That's just the way it is. Like, you know, wrong, right, wrong, or indifferent. Uh, you know, it is what it is. And so, the, you know, we're, we're big on, you know, being upfront and honest about, you know, what you create on social media is your resume because they're, that's the first thing they're going to do is log on to, you know, we, we were at camp today and they're asking, well, what's his, you know, what's his Twitter handle or what's his, you know, Insta, whatever it is. And they're getting on there and looking. So, you know, you're going to hear about it after that, after they contacted that kid. But, you know, it's, it, it's changed recently too because now they're able to come in and watch a kid throw. So, you know, last year when we had Drake, the, you know, coaches would come in and say, hey, I need, you know, Drake and two, three receivers to come in, and it's almost like a in, a, in a, like a pro day when it, when they come watch a quarterback. You know, and they're gonna fly in and watch whoever throw. You know, they're gonna put them through a work, you know, a twenty to thirty minute workout of, hey, we need to see this route, this route, this route. So you kind of gotta have it scripted out as far as what it's gonna be like for him, and then obviously have the guys there as for, you know what that looks like when those guys do get there. But it's you know it's ever it's it's changing so much just from a year to year basis. But you know those those guys are special. You know you you don't you don't get very many great quarterbacks are going to roll in every single year, um, and especially like the one that Chris has this year. And, you know, Drake last year was, you know, the word I used to describe that kid was just consistent from from every week, um, just the way that he prepared and, and took his, you know, took his, went out there and played the game was just, was an awesome thing to watch. But it's, you know, it's it's tough. Because they're, they're showing one spot. I mean, you know, left tackle can play, go play right tackle or, you know, DN. You're going through it right now, and, and, how do you manage it with the, with him and as a coach? And I mean, he's got a lot of stuff going on too. Yeah, he's really busy. You know, from camps to to seven on sevens to getting some private trainings. Um, but those guys have to get it right with quarterbacks because they only get one, like you said. Yeah. You know, they can't get two or three quarterbacks, so uh, they want to make sure they lay eyes on them. You know, they might want to watch film of a of a linebacker or defensive back and. Uh, but they want to come watch that, and not just any coach. They want the quarterback coach come to watch the guy throw, or the head coach, or the offense coordinator. So, um, but I think it's been fun. Like Casey said, it's changing. It's different this year than it was five years ago. You know, we've had several good quarterbacks at Greenwood. They've gotten a lot of attention, and uh, the game's changed, and so the process changed. But uh, it's fun when you walk into practice, and there's sure four big time head coaches in there, offensive coordinators watching your guys throw. And I tell you what, it's good for your other kids too. I know Coach Dick can tell you this. You know, they may come to watch Kane throw, but they're going to see our receivers running routes. They're going to see our linemen. And, uh, you know, I just think it hope, helps your overall program. When you have great players and people want to come watch them play, it helps everybody in your program. No doubt. Bray? Uh, one of the questions I had for you all was um, back when I was in high school, um, pregame, you know, we'd have our meal at probably, I don't know, 4 o'clock, maybe 3, 3.30. Um, and then we were kind of let loose. And then we'd show back up prior to kickoff and – and you know, you're rolling through your pregame situation. And then uh, I come to find out, you know, we had a pretty good football team back then. So just kind of show up and <laughs> kick, kick some butt. <laughs> and um, what do you all do for your pregame routine? You know, school ends on Friday. And then what's kind of your hour by hour or what's your process? Yeah, with home games, uh, we send our kids home after school. And then uh, they'll eat it, actually eat at home and eat on their own. And then we bring them back up at 445. And uh, – now our moms take care of us. We'll have some healthy snacks and Gatorade and stuff like that in there they can snack on. But uh, we're pretty scheduled, you know, from when they get taped to the special teams meeting to the offensive meeting, defensive meeting, chapel, and everything's lined out uh, from the time they get there at 445 until kickoff. We, we, ours is a little bit different. We keep ours. <laughs> so we, get, we, we usually get ours. Um, you know, I think this year we'll get them about 315. So I mean, we, we'll pass it out just from a sheer number standpoint, try to pass out uniforms and that takes a little bit longer from on home games. We try to dress all the kids. Um, so there's about 145 that will, that will dress out. And then, 
we'll go to pregame meal from four to four thirty, and then I'll give them from four thirty to five thirty to get dressed, get taped, and then at five thirty, like Coach Young does, we do special teams, offensive defense meetings, and then we start stretching and, and going outside and handling that routine. But it doesn't that doesn't ever change. You know, they know from four thirty to five thirty every single week they're gonna have that hour to you know, get dressed, get taped, you know, kind of have some little mental preparation side too. If they need to, they can go in the weight room, they'll go in the locker room, just depending on, you know, what that looks like for them and how they do that. But they have that hour to, you know, kind of set aside some things and really start, you know, honing into that preparation for sure. The and the following day, um, your Saturday, Sunday routine. Um, we've done it a little differently each year. Um, haven't quite found something that works best for us. Do y'all have a routine on the weekend with your players? Yeah, we do. We uh, we actually give our kids off Saturday. Uh, we got a lot of kids like to hunt, like to fish. Yeah, get, get into that because yeah. I know y'all did that. Y'all were always Saturday for a long time and went to Sunday. Can I talk about why yeah, that happened? we used to do Saturday mornings, but, you know, our kids, some of them like to sleep in, some of them like to hunt and fish, uh, some of them like to watch college football in the morning. So, uh, we gave them Saturday off. Unless they're hurt, they'll come in for treatment. Our trainers are there, and we're blessed to have them. But uh, we bring our kids in on Sunday from 2 to 4. And that way, both both those mornings, they can sleep in, they can hunt, uh, they can go to church service on Sunday. And, and we feel like it's worked really well for us. Um, the kids enjoy that break. They enjoy resting the day after a game, being able to sleep in. And, uh, and then Sunday, we've got most of our stuff done as a staff as far as wrapping up the game from the night before and we're able to move on to our next opponent. We, we switched to exactly what he did probably four years ago, and I think it's been extremely beneficial for not only our kids, but our coaches. I don't, I don't, I don't know about you, but we don't, I don't, we don't bring the coaches up on Saturday. Now, they have a list of, you know, criteria and things that they're going to get down on Saturday as far as game planning and things. Because, I mean, you can do it on huddle. You can knock all that stuff out. And, you know, they set aside times of when things had to be, you know, essentially turned in and done. Um, but it's, I think that's been the single handling most beneficial thing that we've done is not bring kids in or coaches on Saturday. And you, you know, he, he hit it on there too, but then how many times throughout the year do you have kids taking official visits that need to be there watching and you try to do a video on Saturday or they're taking an ACT or they have this or they have that. Well then, you know, you're, you're getting upset because 10 of your kids aren't there and they're 10 of your kids that really need to be there to, you know, watch or lift video or whatever it is. Um, so th we, we've gotten just strictly to where the only time our kids come in is if they need treatment. Yeah. And this is my last question. I feel like this could be considered maybe PD for me. <laughs> put it in my shoe box. Um, y'all, y'all's, uh, your lifting schedule during the week. How often do y'all, um, get the guys in the weight room on game week? We're going three, three times a week. Three times. We, uh, we're blessed. We have an advisory schedule at our school where we actually get our kids another 40 minutes during the day. Uh, after second period, if they're doing what they're supposed to do in the classroom, which I think helps both ways. Number one, we're really careful keeping up with our kids' grades, making sure they're doing what they're supposed to do in the class because that way we're able to get them during that time to give us essentially a 40 minutes where we can lift. So we'll lift three days and we'll watch film two days. Uh, talk to us a little bit about this. Is, you know, the both your conferences, let's get into it a little bit, in the state of football in high school where it is in Arkansas. To me, I, I think it's as good as it's ever been. I, I think there's more coaches. It's getting coached well. I think, you know, the guys, the kids are putting time into it. They're, you know, lifting. Where it was to, when I started 28 years ago or whatever, it's changed. And you've been in and around for a lot, while, about as long as I have. And your dad coached, you know, was the Hall of Fame coach Joe Fred Young at Fort Smith Northside and then was here at Fayetteville, Little Rock Central, well known. And so you've you've seen it. You've came from Texas and you know, played here and, and you've been in it a while too. You're no young coach anymore. And so what where is the state of Arkansas high school football right now? Do you think we're in a good shape or there's some changes that you might want to see or, or just open forum here? Go ahead. Uh, you know, I think we're in good shape. You know, I'm I'm more on the lines of, and I know Chris and I have talked about like is, is there a lot going on in the summer to where we could hone it down? You know, a couple of days. And I think the longer we do this, the more, you know, the older you get, it's like okay, it, can we shrink it any? You know, to give our kids, you know, two and a half or three weeks off. You know, so I, it, but I think that's just who we are as 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 coaches and what we do in the business. Is there a better way to do what we're doing? I think. You know, that's constantly what we do is, you know, is there, an, is there a more efficient way to do what we're doing to make it better, not only for us, because as you guys know, like our job is to also take care of our kids, but also take care of our coaches. Yeah. Um, so that, that's big on how we, you know, try to look at things 
whether it says you can do it or not. Like, is it beneficial for, for your group of kids that, that you are? Um, but I would agree. I think you look across the state, there's, there's unbelievable coaches, you know, at all levels, whether, whether you're talking the biggest classifications or the smallest. And, you know, you look at kid, schools and programs that are competing for, you know, state championships, it seems – you know, there's obviously a, co a couple that are up there at the top, you know, across all levels. But there's also, a, you know, there's also a little shift of, you know, of things that are occurring for sure. So I think it's in a great spot. I think we, we you know, like I said, we have, we have great coaches that do great things and then obviously have some really special kids as well. You know, I think we ask a lot of these kids these days. And I think we've got to evaluate that from a coach's standpoint or an administrative standpoint or, or AAA. But – uh, you know, you've got a lot of kids, and I know I do, that that play not only football, but they play baseball or they play basketball or they play soccer. And and so in the summer, when we're doing all these football activities, they're also doing all these baseball activities or they're also playing all these uh, basketball team camps. And so, you know, anything that's good for kids, I'm for. And I think we probably need to sit down together with coaches and administrators and figure out are we doing what's best for kids. And if that means, you know, giving them a three-week or a four-week dead period where – uh, they get to be kids for a little while too, uh, because when they're with us, we're grinding and we're working, and and uh, but we got to find that balance between letting a kid be a high school kid and letting a kid get the benefits of playing high school sports, uh, regardless of which sport it is. And and I think that's an ongoing conversation. Um, I think the state of Arkansas football is as good as it's been. Uh, you you compare it with Oklahoma and Missouri, and and I just think Arkansas is the best state. And and like Coach Dick said. We've got so many coaches in our state that have just really improved, and, and the staffs. Every time you play somebody, I'm impressed. I, I love watching coaches coach. And so we'll go to team camps, and I'll kind of sit back when we're not playing and watch another staff, and we got some really good staffs in the state. Uh, and then there's more parity now. I think the, the balance from top to bottom in our league especially is getting a lot closer than it used to be. You know, you used to have two or three really good teams, a couple average teams, and then a couple teams weren't very good. And uh, I think it's getting a lot closer within our conference for sure. And that's interesting when we get in this because you're fixing – you've dealt with the PAs and Little Rock Christians the last, last two years. They've bumped up into your league now, which you're going to get Fort Smith Northside. Talk about – you're getting Shiloh moving up into the 6A. Talk a little bit about that dynamics and just watching how all the conference are changing so much every two years with, you know, with people moving up, moving down, and that part of it. You know, I think the when you look at, the, obviously, the Central League – and you add PA and you add Little Rock Christian, I mean, that's going to be a couple dynamic teams. You know, you watch those teams play, and they're, they're a little bit un unorthodox in their yeah. approach um, and what they do, but they're really, really good. Um, I, you know, Little Rock Christian was at, was at um, Coach Young's team camp, and we had, you know, got to see them, and they got a quarterback that's a great player. You know, they do a lot of good things on offense, and then they're, they're a little bit different on defenses too from, from what they like to do. And then, you know, PA is going to be PA. They're going to, you know, they're going to have that, kind of that same Kevin Kelly philosophical – belief system and you know get in a bunch of different formations and motions and do you know do some really good things so I think when you look at it this year the central is going to be you know a little bit deeper obviously than than, than where they've been and they there's not going to be you know that big drop off of, of from where it has been and then you know you you take the the 7a west and our league and you're adding north side in there um you know it's it's going to be as good as it's been as I believe from from you know having Bentville and west and obviously you look at what Rogers did last year um, and then you're adding north side so I mean and you know you still have Springdale Heritage and Harbor that that you know you're going to have to make sure that you're that you're ready to go because each one of those teams every week has something different like you look at Rogers and you know they're going to throw the ball vertically you know on on offense and you know with the kids that they had last year and then do it you're pretty aggressive on defense and then Bentonville is going to be you know who they are as far as you know tight ends and play action and you know really really sound on defense and make you make you be you know really disciplined to beat them so it's just you know like you said it's really you know it's kind of it's very you know, there's a lot of parity there it's just weird with the balance but you had those two then all you know in the 6a and then all of a sudden bam you've got the shallows leaving brace conference and coming into your conference yeah you know it's double-edged sword pa and little rock christian our kids really enjoy playing those guys i think we have tremendous amount of respect for for both those programs you know uh, coach Lu lucas is a way underrated coach yeah that guy does a heck of a job you know people always talk about the talent and they've got great talent that guy's a football coach and their staff does a great job with those guys and then dustin grimmett the new head coach of little rock christian i think he's one of the best young defense coordinators in the state and uh, this will be his first opportunity as a head coach but those guys are very well coached and and we enjoy playing them i think we're better because we've played them the last two years 
And, uh, you know, we'll miss competing against those guys. But it is nice that Casey's got to mess with them now and we don't. <laughs> uh, but then you get rid of those guys. And like you said, you get Shiloh Christian. Tucker Bernard there does a fantastic job. We played him when he was at Stillwater. And he got after us pretty good a couple years ago. And uh, so he's going to have those guys ready. They're a really talented football team, really well coached. And then Southside, uh, you know, is, is going into a program that, you know, they're used to playing people with 120, 130 kids. And, and uh, they're going to be a challenge for us, you know. Uh, so they graduated a bunch of good players last year, I know. But, but those guys will have them ready to go. So you lose two good teams and you get two good teams in. The way I see it, it's going to be a wash. And, and uh, it'll be fun to play Southside and Shiloh again. We've played those guys in the past, but hadn't played them in a while. Non-conference schedule. You have a hard time, and I know you have a hard time <laughs> non-conference schedule. What's your – what are you looking for? Are you just trying to get who you can get? Or I know we talked to you last year, and I thought you had a, a great philosophy about, you know, mileage and radius yeah. where you want to play. You just want to state championship. People ain't calling you to play. <laughs> and you, I know the situation you've been in. How do you deal with that? Yeah, it's tough uh, because, you, you know, you're looking at it from both standpoints. Number one, you got to find games, and sometimes that's tough to just find human beings to play. But you want to <laughs> find teams that are going to make you better too. I mean, that's like I said earlier. It's why I can remember my first game as, as a head coach, a benefit game. I played Casey in 2020, and I'm walking off the field in tears almost because, I mean, they just wore our butt out, and I'm thinking we ain't going to win a game. And then we turn around and go undefeated and win the state championship. And I remember Casey this year after we scrimmaged them, and, and they didn't have their best night that night, and he – looking at me talking saying oh we got to get better in a hurry so you want to play those teams that are gonna they're gonna challenge you you know you don't want to play somebody that you're gonna get after and wear out you want to play a team that's gonna make you better and and that's why we play harbor north side and uh bentonville west this year uh bentonville west and harbor are new to us we played them once several years ago during covid uh where we picked them up at the last minute but uh you know it's gonna be a challenge for us but we enjoy that we're gonna get the game plan for a new team and, uh, you know, we think that they'll show us some stuff we got to get better at. Well, Rick was on here last week, and he said he would never play Harbor again. I don't know what that was all about. I think I think, I think that guy over I think that big guy was over here had probably something to do with it over there. <laughs> well, you're still keeping, I mean, the mile radius. and I mean, well, we're, we're trying. It's, you know, it's tough. We've, we've thought about playing each other, but then it's like, okay, well, who's going to scrimmage us? Yeah. So that that was the other part. So we 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 kept that, and then um, you know usually try to get a team from Oklahoma. We were fortunate enough. We we kept Cabot and uh, Coach Reed over there. We we kept him, and he he want, we wanted to continue to play each other. And then we we ended up picking up Broken Arrow out of Oklahoma, uh, and then we picked up Texas High, Texas Arcana, who is really 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 good. If anybody has has yes. seen those guys play, yes, they've, I have. They've got a couple. I think two or three of the top. 50 players in the state of Texas um, and coach Jennifer does an unbelievable job knowing him for a little bit and kind of, you know, what he does and their, their recent success. So it's, it's, we're going to get tested early uh, and, and every week for that part, because then the, our first game when we come out of, of, of um, non-conference is, is going to be Benville West. So, you know, we're going to, we're going to hit that fast. And then, you know, we got, we go two Cabot, two broken arrow, and then Texas high comes here. So we're, we'll be covering a little mileage here and there wow. for, for a little bit, but you know, we like you said, we we love to see, you know, where we are, play some different teams. You know, be Broken Arrow is going to run run a little bit unorthodox defense from everybody. You know, everybody calls it the minibuck or whatever it is. They're just going to line up at fifteen yards, and then when the ball snapped, they're all going to go different places. So that'll be a journey for us. And then obviously, Coach Reed and, and his staff do an unbelievable job. And then, you know, at Texas High, they're going to they're going to have a lot of athletes and and be really sound and disciplined, and and you know, create some issues there. But um, you know, we love that. And just as, like you said, just to see where we are and have some unbelievable competition for sure. Yeah, Texas High's track team's usually pretty good. They had a, they had a freshman <laughs> that, that triple jumped 48 feet this yeah. year. Yeah. Um, we played them down at El Dorado. You got to watch the referees. You got to watch the referees when you go to Texas Canada. I'm just telling you, it was down there 99. Uh, we scored three times. They didn't give us a touchdown. We onside kick and recovered it, walked off the field with the ball and gave it to them. But we're in Texas. I mean, it's just this way it goes, you know. So be careful. Check the referees. Yep. You got well, not this year, but next year we go you down. Go down make sure you, you check on the referees. All right, this is my favorite part right here, and I always tell people this: so you go undefeated, you don't learn anything. You both just went undefeated. What did you learn? 
Yeah, it's a great question. Yeah. I think. I mean, uh, you don't. I mean, I would tell people. I, I don't let kids learn anything going undefeated. There's yeah. no, there's no. Well, they don't, they don't hit that adversity. Yeah. You know what I mean? And adversity is good for you. It's good yeah. for a football team. It's good for a young man to go through. It's one of the biggest reasons I think football is such a benefit to, to everybody that plays it. Um, things went pretty well last year. And, uh, you know, that adversity, I think, is something that really can build a football team. Now, don't get me wrong. I'd rather go 13 0 again. <laughs> if that happens, I'll be good. Um, but we got to have some setbacks, and you have setbacks. You know, you have bad quarters, or you mm -hmm. have bad plays, or, or you have bad practices, and uh, you know you got to focus on that as coaches. It's it's easy to learn a lot from a loss. It really is. Yeah. And so when you don't have that, you got to make sure as coaching staff that you're teaching your kids based on practices and uh, finding ways to improve. And and sometimes you get a little high on yourself, and that hurts you, the football team. So luckily, our coaches, assistant coaches, did a great job last year with our kids. And uh, hope we go 13 0 again. Yeah. What'd you learn? Uh, you know, I think when you, I'm going to fast forward back or rewind back two years ago. Um, and the biggest thing that we learned is, is, is how small the game of football is. Um, and you're going to know exactly what I'm talking about. But we, the, the two football seasons ago, we lost three football games by a total combined of five points. And every one of them was on the last play of the game, whether it was a field goal or a touchdown. So when, when you really break that down and you say five total points on three plays and you lose all three games, you there's a lot of things that go into that jar that, you know, you really learn in a hurry. And so I think our kids really bought into that. I think they really bought into each week and really each day, just like Coach Young said, is is its own its own separate you know, week, you know, in order to go have a great Tuesday practice and have a great, you know, prep week of preparation, you got to have a great Monday practice. So that's really what we focused our, on what well, last year was, okay, we have a great Monday. We didn't talk about anything else. It was just, let's just go have a great Monday and then a great Tuesday practice and a great Wednesday. And, every, you know, the kids are kids. They know who you're playing. Oh, yeah. They're, they're going to know your kid, who you're playing, what the kid's name is, the number, is, you know, what it is, all that stuff. So, like, you don't have to say, hey, we're going to walk in and play Greenwood. Like they're going to know we're playing Greenwood, you know? And so it, it's really, it was beneficial for us last year of, of really getting kids around each other that really genuinely wanted to be around each other and build the continuity and build, you know, really focus on the team. But then also just like coach Young said, you know, win every rep, win as many reps as you can win at practice every single day and then do it again the next day and then do it again the next day. And, and that's just something our kids bought in. Um, and I think that that's one thing that, you know, tremendously helped us, but then it was just, but it also created that consistency consistency factor on the other end of, you know, they knew what to expect on a Monday. He was 18. They knew what to expect on a Tuesday. It was 24 period. So, you know, you, you, you kind of let them know up front, here's what, what it is, but here's what we expect as well. Both of you, you've been at 24 years. What would you go back and tell Chris Young 24 years ago? What's some advice you'd give him? It just goes by so fast. It does. You know, not only individual seasons, but just, you know, you have a kid three years in your high school program, six years if you're involved in junior high, and just find a way to enjoy it. You know, find a way to enjoy the young men outside of football, to spend some time with them, because uh, you miss them like crazy once they're gone. And and it goes by really fast. You know, I was lucky enough to get to coach my kid. And, uh, you know, it just goes by really, really fast. And so just find a way to enjoy it. Um, I'm fortunate I've been a part of 11 state championships and um, so I think it gives me the ability to enjoy some other things. I'm not so focused on winning because I'll be honest, and, and Coach Dick can tell you this now, when you win one, it's fun for about two or three days. Yeah. And then you start worrying about doing it again. When you lose, mm -hmm. it ruins your, your life for, the, for a year. And my wife's sitting over there and smiles. She can tell you that because two years before, we got beat in the finals. And uh, losing is a lot worse than winning is fun. Um, so you got to find ways to enjoy it, but the kids, you know, I miss them cause they get by in a hurry and, and they graduate and, and then you look forward to the time they come by and visit with you. I know oh, you're, yeah. you're well thought of as a football coach and I've ran a lot of people that, that miss coach Williams. And so, uh, just enjoying the time with the kids. Cool. Yeah. I think, you know, exactly what he was saying, you know, two years ago, we, we both, was it two years ago? We both played for it three years ago. You know, we called each other the day after cause we had both lost. Been there, boys. Been there. And we were, and we're talking like, hey, like this is this sucks. Not good, this is not a good feeling. Sucks. Yeah, it's not a good feeling. So we're you know we're, we're talking through some things, but you know the thing that I would tell 
a younger version of myself is, you know, I, we measure, I say, I, I like to measure success based on like when the kids come back yeah. after they leave, you know, yeah, we want to win on Fridays and we want to, you know, do everything we can do for our kids in our program. But when you have that kid that graduated, just like he said, three or four years ago, and they come back and then you look up and you're in the middle of the homecoming and there's 25 kids sitting on your sideline that graduated three or four years ago. Like to me, that means that we did our job, you know, yeah. um, you know, really had a profound impact on them that when they when they left or graduated three four years ago it means enough to them that hey they want to come back um so it's it's it they they put a bigger smile on our face you know when they come back three or four years and you're able to talk to them and say hey like remember that time you did this They're like yeah coach i like i i really get it so i think that's that's the awesome part of our job is you know we get to watch them and then send them and then hopefully they come back and really you know just are able to talk about everything that's cool give me a story both of you your playing career we always end with this Playing career coach, I've been this year. Give us a story so that nobody knows about and that you'll never forget. In your football, whatever. Anything to do with football, give us a story. You know, my best memories I can remember, I and mean, you'll know this place, when my dad was the head coach at Northside, in his office, he had a couch in there, and I was probably three, four, five years old. I can remember going in there and just hanging out at 5.36 in the morning and being with my dad and, and you know, watching practice and, and hanging out on the couch, swinging in the equipment room in there back there in Northside. Uh, man, football is just such a, a great game, not only to play, but just to be around and be a part of. And, and I have great memories being a coach's kid. Uh, both my parents were coaches, and, and so I spent a lot of time up at the field house, but uh, you know, that's one of the reasons I went to coach and I felt very fortunate that, that I had that upbringing and was able to experience that stuff with my parents and, and I thought it was a good way to raise my children. Yeah, I'm, I'm along the same lines because when we first got to Fayetteville, um, there were not a whole lot of coaches kids that would come around the office. So then now I look up and we're, you know, in the middle of a 7.30 a.m. practice and there's literally seven or eight kids, it's awesome. you know, in our office and I'm like, at one point, you know, my wife will come in there on Friday night, and it's the same thing on a Friday night. I, I get done, you know, playing, or, and I've got to spend 35 minutes after the kids leave cleaning the office up because I can't, I just can't stand clutter everywhere. But it's the same way after every workout. Like our, our every, all of our coaches now bring their kids up, and we're outside running, you know, on the field, and all their kids are in the D zone or running around their weight room, and it's just like it's awesome to see our kids get to be dads also yeah. because they they know the amount of time that we're up here working and that we're doing that, but. You know, I love for our kids to see, you know, have our own kids up there and then they get to interact with them because I've got a little son now and, you know, he's fortunate. He's talking about coaching his kid. My my son's seven years old and he looks up to those kids like yeah. it is. And they don't even know. It. And that's what I tell them all the time. I say, guys, you have no idea how much when I leave this building, he's talking about, you know, you, you and you about hey, he, he did this, this and this. And I want to wear a necklace like like he's wearing. And I'm like, so those those are the you know, those are the things that they don't really understand, but also the impact that they have on young kids. Well, you know, of course, my dad coached like yours and been around it. When you go to a field house and families are there, I mean, you know there's something good going on. There's something special. And I've been part of it where ain't nobody coming in that coach's office. And it's, it is, you know, it's kind of a cold, dark place. Well, but it's a tight group, especially, you know, we're fortunate. we got a great group of coaches' wives. Yeah. Well, they've got to be because they've got to sit in the stands together. There's a lot of nights nice. nobody <laughs> yeah, else will nobody sit, will sit by in the stands. And, and, you know, I think that's just built over time, trust and having each other's back and, and spending those hard nights together or, uh, after a big loss or getting beaten in the state championship game. I think those bonds get strengthened. And I think that's what's special about coaching is being around those people and developing those relationships. And even if we got to have co hard conversations with people, you know, on staff, that still grows you. I, I mean, I, if, I, if they do it right, it, you know, it's still – they grow because we're, it's all one one common goal. I think our, our profession is one of the only ones to where you put a bunch of guys in a room and that other, if other people walked in, like it wouldn't, it would seem crazy to them. But to us, it's like, well, we're just coaching ball. It's yeah. something that, you know, that we're all passionate about and, you know, we're excited to do. And when we leave, there's not going to be, you know, nobody's going to have any hard feelings. We just want what's best you know, it may take us 30 minutes to figure it out, but it's yeah. going to, you know, we're going to arrive. I think, you you know, our profession, when we can close the door, say what you want to play, and when we, when we walk out of there, it's like, okay, like, we figured it out. You know, and nobody's, you know, in my experience, for the most part, nobody's really got, you know, their feelings hurt or anything else because we're all trying to, everybody knows we're trying to achieve a common purpose. I think so. Well, guys, 
last thing, let's hear about your teams a little bit and uh, start with you and talk a little bit about your conference and 7A, and then we'll come back over here with you. Yeah, you know, I think when you look at uh, across our conference, you know, there's a, there's a lot of quality players coming back. Um, you know, when, when you start, obviously, with Bentonville and, and the people that they have coming back, um, you know, obviously, their, their offensive line and defense, they're going to be very disciplined there. Um, but every team has a lot of, you know, really unique pieces um, coming back. And then from our standpoint, we've got the majority of our receivers are coming back and then our DBs and linebackers are there. And I think our D-line is, is, is coming along and doing some really, you know, great things from I don't think we'll be as electric there as we were last year um, with the kids that we had. But we've got some unbelievable kids who are fighting their tail off every day to continue to climb and get better. But there's a lot of pieces coming back all, all throughout the district. There's also some teams changing, you know, philosophically from what they did last year because, you know, kids leave your program and you can't stay the same. But um, so there'll be some different faces and some different looks in there as well um, when you line up and go play each other on our Friday night. So I would look, you know, for us, it's going to be. I think the same thing that you're going to get every year from the 7A West. It's going to be awesome, you know, all throughout the year, a, a very driven league that's going to make it, you know, obviously and hopefully a deep run in the playoffs for everybody. Yeah, excited about the bunch we have coming back. You know, obviously lost some really good football players, but I feel like we've got a bunch of good ones coming back. Offensively, really excited about our wide receiver group, maybe as good a group as we've had at Greenwood, and we've had some really good groups. Uh, but just a, a deep group where we've got six guys that we think can really make plays for us. And when you got a really good group of receivers with a quarterback like Kane coming back, uh, it gives you a chance to be special. I'll be really good on the offense line. We've got three starters back. Uh, got another starter that moved in. And, and so a lot of kids with a lot of experience uh, that, that'll put us in the right situation. Defensively, lost a lot of guys, but got some really good one back. Uh, Cash Archer moved from defensive end to linebacker. Uh, Jaden Jasna, Zitzman. So some good pieces to build our defense around. And then I think I've, you know, like I said earlier, I think I've got the best staff in, in Arkansas. So I just back up and get out of the way and let those guys put pieces <laughs> together. So, you know, we talked about staffs earlier. Casey and I are probably uh, don't realize how lucky we are. You and your role as AD, I'm getting a little bit of a taste of that now. Uh, we're fortunate. We're fortunate yeah. with the coaches we have because there's not a lot of those guys out there. And uh, so I know Casey and I have talked on a regular basis about our staffs and how high we are on both of them. And uh, everybody's not like that. So. No. If you can get some good players and some good football coaches, it gives you a chance to have a good football team, and and that's what we're looking forward to this year. Well, and I think you talk both of talk. And I, I respect both your staffs. I mean, know a lot of guys on both of. Them. They understand the expectation and understand the goal. I mean, kids first, obviously, but what we're trying to do here and how to do it and build it, mm -hmm. and that's a lot of success. And it, it, it kind of elaborate a little bit on that. I mean, they yeah. understand that. Yeah, you know, not only are we going to hold our players accountable we're going to hold our coaches accountable. And there's high expectations for our coaches. You know, uh, we work seven days a week for 14 weeks in a row, hopefully, if things go right. And uh, and those guys work extremely hard. Uh, but they know what we expect of them. And uh, the, the great thing about our guys is they go above that. And so, uh, you know, I really think it's one of the reasons we're successful is that we've got seven assistant coaches that, that are willing to put in that work, are willing to put in the time. You know, the funny thing about high school football, you go 0-10, and you're done after week 10, yeah. you get the same salary as if you go 14-0 and 0 and, and work four more weeks. You know, we'll win a game in the second round of the playoffs to go to the semifinals. Well, those guys are now working five days in, yeah. in Thanksgiving that they were going to have vacation if yeah. they'd gotten their butt yeah. beat. And they're thrilled to be there. So, uh, Well, know. we always do this when we do our show during playoffs. I always make an announcement to all the parents and fans out there before you yell at your coach in the playoffs he is working for free <laughs> so keep that in mind there i mean the same thing with your staff i mean and you've kind of put that staff together i mean you yeah. had some holdovers from coach Dawson, but a lot of new guys you got a new offense coordinator yep. in this year but they understand the expectations and, you know and, and, and coach Vlarovich, our you know offensive corner has been a head coach yeah and, and coach young knows when you whenever you're able to bring a guy in especially that's been successful like he has been you know, both at the college level and then, you know, being down in Nashville, you know, he, he understands, he gets, you know, all the, all the different angles and views of it is from being an offensive coordinator, but also being a head coach. So that's awesome to have him as a sounding board also. And then, you know, I've got two guys on the defensive side of the ball that have been with me for, for a long time now that, you know, they do a great job of also challenging me, you know, because they never, those two guys and, and you know, and, and Mike never, 
never want us to stay the same. So it's, you know, whether it's, well, we need to do this or this, it's never, you know, you never, they never, you don't ever get in a routine because they do an unbelievable job. And that's kind of the point to where we've gotten to, because we've been around, you talk about relationships and working with people and having the same staff of, well, let's try this, this, or this, because we've been doing this, let's, let's see if this is better. So, you know, it's, it's always, we're, everybody's, you know, constantly pushing the envelope of, of seeing if there's a better way to do it and change it. And sometimes it, you know, honestly, it causes you to get out of your comfort zone and, and yeah. try a different angle or try a different approach that you may not like. Like I didn't, I wouldn't, I was not going to be, if you, three years ago, if you told me I would love taking Saturdays off for players and coaches, I'd have told you you're crazy. Because every year for five years in a row in Texas, that's what we did. That's just what we did. And then, you know, we got challenged to change it. And I think it's the most beneficial thing we've done as a group to let our kids go be kids throughout the year. Let our coaches go watch their kids on Saturday. And then, but also just let our kids go be kids. So, I think there's small things like that that in the long run, you don't really understand how big of a difference that makes, you know, week 12, 13 and 14 or whatever that is um, that really enable your kids to step away and take a deep breath and then come back, recharge, ready to roll. Cool deal. Well, guys, we appreciate you coming on today and take your time. I you're going to get a little vacation time here. I, I think I might get a little bit too. I need some. All right. We got two All-American Steakhouse, a hundred dollar gift card for both Ooh, of dang. you guys. Talk to us. Me and Bray have sampled. I know you can't tell. I've sampled a lot this summer over at the All American Steakhouse. Uh, the dip. Crab dip. Crab dip. Get the crab dip and the cowboy ribeye. There we go. Powerful. Powerful. Sounds like I'm in Seoul already. Yeah, I mean, it's, 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 it's unbelievable. We ate so much there three weeks ago. Bray had to pick me up and carry me out of there. That's true. <laughs> true <laughs> story. It's good place. I couldn't. Somebody should have got a photo. Bray picked me up. It was unbelievable. Unbelievable place. Ben's apartment. What a place. We're, but appreciate you guys coming on. We're going to have you on, obviously, during the year, like we do all the time. For Coach Jeff Williams and Coach Bray Cook, we'll see you next time.